everybody. It's me, Jessica, your health fitness program manager from McLean, and I'm looking forward to guiding you through today's yin yoga practice. Yay, Fridays are my favorite day of the week because this is one of my favorite forms of movement, if we can call it that, because <laughs> there is some movement, but there is a whole lot of stillness. Yin is a great practice for those who are new to yoga, who are just looking to create some stretches, some sensations, some new connections within their body because we get to use a lot of props. So today I have a block nearby and I also have a strap. Make sure they are within a reaching distance of your mat. We're gonna get started on the floor here in Sukhasana in two minutes two minutes till we get started. There won't be any actual water breaks for class, but I do encourage you to make sure that you have some water nearby just in case you need it. And if you find that you are gonna drink water, try to do so between the postures. So your goal today is gonna to be to create a noticeable stretch. It might even feel a little bit uncomfortable, but it shouldn't feel painful. If at any point the stretches that you create do go from being noticeable, uncomfortable, into feeling painful, that's when it's time for you to make a little bit of movement, take a step back, find what does feel good, and a new place to hold within there. Make sure that the number one thing you're focusing on is your slow, relaxed breaths and whatever postures or asanas you're able to create within that breath to find that stretch sounds great. Just make sure that you're not muscling so much into finding the shape I described that you limit your breath. Because that's not what Yin's all about. All right, one minute until we get started. I do apologize, I forgot to bring my headphones today. I know that the audio won't be as amazing, but the good news is this is a opportunity to bring a little more quietness to today's class. So if you would like to put some music on at home, my favorite music when I practice yin is something like the ambient relaxation soundtrack on Spotify, but I encourage you to listen to anything that helps you relax and feel good. Typically, listening to music without words can be a, a lot easier for you to enjoy your practice because if you're listening to music with words, you might find yourself distracted and focusing on something other than your breath and the movement. So have that block nearby, have a strap nearby, and we're gonna go ahead and get started in less than one minute. We are going to start down here on the floor. I'm already there. I know. It's amazing. Just getting started as quickly as we can. Uh, in Sukhasana, if you find that coming down to the mat in this seated position is not as comfortable for you, or if those knees are coming all the way up towards your chest because your hips are tight, you can lift yourself up on the block. And I'll join you there because why not? Take the opportunity to use our props to find a little bit more openness. If having your legs crossed and in tight doesn't feel good for you, then go ahead, maybe open those legs a little bit wider or even spread your legs out. Still being lifted on the block can help to relieve some of the tightness in your lower back and your hamstrings if you find sitting on the floor uncomfortable. All right, let's go ahead and get started in our easy seated position of choice. And as we begin, take in the thought that every day is different, every day our bodies are different, and you're here to do the best that you can with the body that you have today. No expectations, no judgments, just breath, movement, and stillness. All right, so come into the seated position in which you can start to find that stillness. Maybe the first minute you're fidgeting around a little bit. I know I'm fidgeting around to find what feels good. And once you get there, simply relax. You can either have your hands in your lap or maybe down on the floor next to you. Start to tune into and slow down your breath. I'm checking on the quality of each breath 
Normally, when we're feeling stressed or overwhelmed, we breathe a lot in the top of our chest. You might even find that as you're breathing, your shoulders are rising and lowering with your breath. While we're relaxed, our shoulders stay released away from our ears. There's a little bit more of a lift in the chest, and it's easier to send that breath all the way down to the bottom of your diaphragm. So on your inhale, notice your rib cage, your lungs gently expanding. Take a moment with your lungs full. And on your exhale, slowly, intentionally, breathe all of that stale air out. So each inhale provides the space for fresher, deeper, maybe even longer breaths. We're gonna spend one more minute right here, right now, in this Sukhasana. So while here, take a scan of your body from head to toe and just notice how you're feeling today. Does anything feel uncomfortable? And if it does, that's okay. We're just taking notice. If you did find a space that doesn't feel so great, can you send your breath into those tight or uncomfortable places? So I know for me, got a little bit of a tension headache. So I'm inhaling in, just thinking about sending all of the air up to my head. And exhale, letting go of any stress and hopefully creating a little bit more openness. As we come into some of our longer holds or deeper stretches today, it's also really normal. If you might notice any shaking or trembling, don't be scared. That's just your body creating those deeper connections. Continue with this slow, steady breath, and we're gonna make our way down on the floor into a savasana, keeping your block and your strap close by. We're gonna get started on some moves just for the right side of the body, and then when we finish them, we'll move to the left. So whichever side it looks like I'm doing in this video, I promise I'm doing my right side first, and I want you to do your right side first because we're starting with wind removing pose. So find some length through your left leg and go ahead, draw your right leg up. Pull it out to the side for a moment and then back up towards your chest so that you're gently avoiding your rib cage. And then we're gonna use our hands on top of our shin to create a little bit of compression. So this is yin. You don't have to think of this wind removing pose as intensely as you might have in another class where we would both actively be pulling and pushing. You can be a little passive here in this posture. In fact, if it feels right for you, you can even use your strap to help you uh, come into this single leg knee to chest pose. We're gonna stay here for two minutes from right now. So find what feels good for you. Relax the back of your head down on the mat. Maybe even a gentle little tuck of your chin towards your chest to get more of the shoulders back of the neck down on the mat. Because this is a compression posture, you might feel a pinching sensation in your lower right abdomen as you are compressing the ascending colon and if you don't feel that pressure right now, that's totally okay. Maybe you'll feel it next time. One minute left right here. Melt into the mat as much as you can. For this next posture, I encourage you 
uh, to use your strap so that you're not muscling through the movement. I'm gonna make a loop on my strap by sticking one end through the hoops. And in that little loop, I can insert my right foot. From there, we're gonna send right leg up towards the ceiling. If you notice any big arching of your back off of the mat, or if the stretch feels too deep, go ahead. Bend that left leg, getting a nice big toe stretch. So if it's easy for you, you can reach up and grab hold of your big toe, or maybe you're grabbing hold of your sock, or maybe you're being kind and gentle on your body today, and you're just using your strap to begin to stretch into your hamstring. We've got a total of two minutes here in the stretch. You're already in it to win it. Start to slow that breath down. And remember during today's practice that if your eyes are moving, your mind is moving. So either closing your eyes and doing your best to create the shapes as I describe them, or finding one spot for a soft, gentle focus of your eyes. But encourage some stillness through the ocular nerve. And then also work once again towards that stillness in your breath. So at the top, of each breath, pausing with your lungs nice and full. And at the bottom of each breath, again, pausing with your lungs empty. Depending on how tight your hamstring is, you might already be noticing some of that shaking and trembling. But I want you to scan your body one more time and ask yourself how you can relax. Are you bringing any extra tension into your face, into your chest and shoulders, into your belly, into your low back? We're keeping the focus on this posture, on the hamstring stretch. Take one more big inhale. And on your exhale, we're going to cross that right leg over the left. You can keep your strap there. Go ahead, bring those two knees in one line. We're going to take a moment here in this figure four stretch in two different ways. The first moment, we're going to keep the left foot down on the floor. And the second minute, we're going to get a little bit deeper and lift that left leg up. So with the left leg down on the floor and right leg crossed over, you should feel a big opening at the front side of your hip, maybe a little towards the side. And in just a couple breaths, when we lift that left leg up off of the mat, it's gonna change the stretch to come towards the back of your bent cross-legged glute, which I hope is still your right leg. Take your time, let's lift that left leg up off of the floor. And you can always use the strap that was still around your ooh, right foot if you need to, to help you to draw that thigh gently towards the chest. I'm still taking a stretch from the outside of the right leg towards the wall behind me to help increase the stretch throughout the glute. You've got one minute left right here. Relax through your head, your neck, your shoulders. So try not to put too much tension in holding this left leg up. On your next exhale, release your left leg down towards the floor. Keep these legs crossed. Extend your arms out wide to the side of the T, and we're going to drop both legs over to the side. The goal being to get both knees down on the floor, which is also why we kept this nice wide cross. I prefer to keep my right shoulder on the mat and bring a block to the party to help fill in that space where my right leg is not quite touching the floor. You got over a minute left here, so relax. If you want to bring your neck to the party for a gentle neck stretch, turn and look in the opposite direction of your legs. Start that scan of your head all the way down to your toes, melt into your mat. 
as much as you can. So really relaxing through the upper body, through your hands, through the toes, keeping the stretch through the spine, the obliques, the glutes, the hips, the thighs. Take your time carefully, roll onto your back once again. When you get there, remove the strap from your right foot. Uncross your legs. You can take a moment, even a windshield wipe of the knees, or relieve any tension that might have built up on your lower back. And then go ahead, extend both legs out again, taking a moment, passing through a savasana. So arms down by your side. Heels touch, toes fall open. If you're having any pain in your lower back though, take a bend of your knees so you can firmly plant uh, your lower back down on the mat. Take two more breaths here. And then we'll come into wing removing in the opposite side. So if you bend your knees, straighten both legs, keep those heels close together. Start to flex your right toes towards your face. Right leg stays straight, left leg lifts up. Bring it out to the side to avoid your rib cage. Interlace your fingers on top of the shins all the way up to the webbing in your nice tight anti-arthritic grip. Shoulders relax down towards the mat. Take that tucking of your chin towards your chest and start to draw your knee in towards the center line of the body. So slight compression right here, this time on the descending colon. That's why we started right leg first, left leg second, and don't worry, we'll get some pressure for that transverse colon after we finish on this left side of the body. So notice if you have any extra tension in those biceps and relax, your upper body as much as you can. Remember, if it's hard for you to hold onto your leg, you can use your strap right here to help you find this grip. You've got just about one minute left on the left side when you're moving. Next up is that big toe stretch to get into our hamstring. So take your strap if you're using it, place it around the left foot, and then send left leg up towards the ceiling. Remember, if this feels really intense, bending that right leg can make the stretch even easier. If you don't have any props, you can simply have your left leg stretching up towards the ceiling. The prop is just gonna help you relax, maybe get a little bit deeper to release more into the stretch. We got two minutes here. 
Find that spot, focus your eyes. Just breathe and be. So make sure you're not bringing too much muscle or tension into your upper body to hold your leg here. Focusing on that hamstring stretch on the back of the thigh. I have no doubt you can hear the ticking of the clock in the back of the room. I promise Captain Hook is not coming here. One thing I do enjoy during yin is when you get really quiet, starting to notice the different sounds in the room. So check within your space too, as you quiet your body, your mind, and your breath, what's the furthest away sound that you can hear in your room? Beautiful stillness. Go ahead, cross your left leg over the right. Keep your right foot down on the floor. Work to bring those two knees in one line though. So starting off by stretching your left foot away from you. Sorry, left knee away from you. Spend one minute right here, focusing on the opening of your hip flexor. Use your next inhale to lift your right leg up off of the floor. And you can use your strap, probably the easiest thing to help you to bring the right knee closer towards your chest. Find the stretch that feels right for you though. If this is too intense for you, you can always release your right foot back down on the floor and still enjoy this great figure four stretch with the opening in the hip flexor as opposed to stretching a little bit more through the glute. Find your stillness that's first and foremost right after your slow, relaxed, easy breath. On your next exhale, release your right foot down towards the floor, keep your legs crossed, send your arms out in the T and drop your legs over to the left side. Can you get both knees down to the floor? I couldn't today either. So I'm gonna take that prop and I'm gonna place the block nice and tall underneath slash to the side of my left thigh to help me just enjoy and melt into the spine twist.
One more breath in this posture. And on your exhale, carefully roll onto your back once more. Take the strap off of your foot, extend both legs out in front of you, taking another moment in Savasana. So arms relax down by your side, bring those heels in close, allow those toes to fall open. Make sure that strap hasn't gone too far. Next up is knees to chest pose. So draw both knees in towards your chest and squeeze those legs towards each other. So feet are relaxed side by side. This might already be a time that you want to take your strap and help the strap to tuck you into a tight little ball. Just a couple more breaths right here before we turn ourselves into the happiest babies possible. So lower back is still pressed down towards the mat. We're gonna roll up onto our shoulders at all here to come into this knee to chest pose. Maybe you feel that compression sensation of the lower abdomen completely. Take one more big inhale. And on your exhale, we're going to send the soles of the feet up towards the ceiling. I'm going to transfer my strap onto my legs, open the knees a little bit wider Ooh, for a happy baby. We're spending a whopping three minutes here in this happy baby. So if having your hands up towards the sky or off of the mat is too much for you, simply bring the strap behind your thighs. Find a way for you to relax. A little bit of an inversion here with legs up towards the ceiling. Helping to just encourage that lymph to move, the blood to flow back towards our hearts. Relax the back of your head towards the mat as much as you can. and find your stillness. So try not to fidget here. But any twitching or trembling that happens through those legs that's involuntary, you enjoy that. doing an amazing job. Keep the stillness. We're just a couple of breaths away from making a change. You got that big stretch in your hamstrings and hips, but what else can you relax while we're working on it? Two more breaths. Okay. 
on your next exhale. Bring the soles of the feet back down towards the mat. Put your strap to the side. Keep your knees bent. Let's stretch that lower back. So press up into the soles of the feet. Lift your glutes off the floor. Take your block and place it under your lower back for a nice little supported glute bridge. So glutes gently relax off of the block, a little pressure into your lower back. You can keep your knees bent or if it feels good for you, if you want more of an intense stretch, a little bit more stimulation of the belly, you can even walk those legs all the way out. We're gonna stay here in this reclined glute bridge for two minutes, so just find what feels good today. Remember, it doesn't matter how you've done the stretch in the past. Maybe you've straightened those legs out or stretch your arms all the way overhead for a pontoon pose last time, but today it doesn't feel right. Or maybe you've always stayed here in this supported glute bridge, but today you take that stretch of your arms up overhead or straighten your legs. Whatever it is, find it right now for just about a minute and a half of stillness left right here. Last couple of breaths, check in with that upper body. Is it as melted into the mat as it can be? job. All right, we're going to press into the soles of the feet, lift our hips up, remove the block from underneath of us, and make our way into a seated position again. Take your time coming back up into the seated position. I know we've been really relaxing and enjoying ourselves on our backs ah, for so long. Next up, we're going to take a little stump. So, Find your way to your glutes. We're gonna draw those heels in close towards the center line of the body. You can either use your hands on your shins to lift that chest up, or maybe you can wrap your arms or your elbow crooks around those legs. We're gonna spend just over one minute from right here in this stump. If this is really uncomfortable for you, if you prefer to do a squat, you can always lift yourself up and come into a squat. But however you're stumping or squatting, there should once again be a little bit of pressure applied to the abdominal core. Getting a good hip opening without the balance if you're staying down here on the floor with me. So I'll take one more big inhale. 
And on the exhale, carefully start to release, make your way into tabletop. So hands, palms underneath of your chest, hips stacked right on top of your knees. When you get here, give yourself a couple cat cows while I tuck my shirt in like a winner. But if you're home by yourself, in fact, if you're in a room with other people, but you're not recording this video uh, to be on YouTube forever, who cares if, you're, if your shirt moves? You're amazing. Your awesome body has already supported you through this practice. So if you let a little skin show, that's okay. All right, next we're gonna take a deeper hip opener coming into lizard with an option for a bit of a twist. So let's bring that right leg forward. Maybe you even need to walk or wiggle that right leg a little further forward to create some length through the back leg. If the floor feels really far away, feel free to use your block to lift that hand up. Let's spend one minute right here, just pressing forward, finding a big opening of the bent knee on the floor, legs, hip. Now you can stay right here. However, if you'd like to get a little bit deeper, maybe a little stretch into that back leg quad as well, we're gonna bend that back knee up. Oh my gosh, I'm feeling tight. <laughs> I promise we're gonna bend that back knee up. I need to give myself a little bit more support under that knee, so I'm gonna fold um, my mat in. Lift that back knee up, there we go. Reach your opposite hand back and grab your foot. Turns out I'm not feeling as flexible as I thought I was today. And I can't quite grab that foot. So I'm gonna put my strap around my left toes. Bring that left knee up. And just reach for it with my right hand. Walking those fingers a little bit closer Ooh, the more I get my hand towards the bottom of the strap, the more I'm really feeling this in the quad. We've already gotten two minutes into this hip opener. We're gonna spend our last minute here in this twist if you joined me for it. Remember, if things get a little bit too intense and go from being a noticeable stretch to being uncomfortable, painful, you can always release that hand further away from your foot or maybe release both hands back towards the floor and your toe back down towards the floor and just come into your big hip opener. Take one more big inhale. And on your exhale, carefully start to release. Relax that back foot down to the floor. Both hands come down towards the floor. Start to shift your glutes back. So coming back towards tabletop and then bring your right leg back in line to meet with your left. From here, send your glutes back towards your heels. Stretch your hands forward. Bring your head below heart level. Take a couple breaths in your child's pose. Stretch that lower back out. An option to get the stretch in the shoulders by having your hands extended forward. Take one more breath in child's pose. And on your exhale, bring yourself back up into tabletop. I'm going to preemptively switch the strap here onto my right foot because now we're going to go through the same hip opener and the same option for a twist, 
on the other side. So that, but we can be a little bit more prepared this time around. All right, so right leg stays down on the floor. I still have my mat bent up to provide a little extra support. I'm gonna bring my left foot forward. Maybe you're feeling really tight today. I know I feel a little tighter on this side. So I don't need to shift the weight as far forward to start to feel an opening in the hip. But you know what, I did anyway, and it feels good. I'm gonna use the block underneath of my hand. Let's take our first full minute right here. Take your time getting into it. And if being all the way down on the floor isn't working for you, remember you can lift yourself up a little bit higher. But let's find that one spot where we create that noticeable stretch, but it's not too overwhelming. So for me, I found that having my hand closer to the floor on this side was feeling a little bit overwhelming. It was moving from being a stretch that was uncomfortable to being unbearable. So I took it a step back and here we are, still creating stillness in the lower half of the body, still opening up that back bent legs hip. Awesome, you can stay right here or start to bend that back knee reach towards that leg or your strap for a little bit of a of a spine twist Woo. and a quad stretch in the hip opener make sure you didn't come into something so deep that your breath became limited less than a minute to go and then we're going to come back through into that child's pose so find that spot focus your eyes focus your breath give me one more big inhale and exhale here And on that exhale, start to release that back knee back down to the floor. Bring your hands back down towards the mat. Bring your left leg back to meet with the right. Send your glutes back to your heels. Take your minute of child's pose. You're so awesome and you're so worth getting one more stretch. So we're gonna carefully slide ourselves forward, come into a nice sphinx pose. So belly comes down towards the floor, elbows underneath of armpits to find one last stretch in your low back. While we're here, let's look over one shoulder for a couple breaths literally take two breaths looking over one shoulder and when you finish your second breath let's look over the opposite shoulder and then we're going to release ourselves down towards the mat you can make a pillow with your hands and place your forehead on the pillow or you can relax your arms down towards your side and bring one ear towards the floor to get a nice stretch in your neck we're going to do our savasana right down here on our bellies So if you did turn and place one ear on the mat, we'll take one minute with one ear on the mat. We'll take one minute with the opposite ear on the mat. And 
as your belly is on the floor. This time I want you to think about as you take an inhale, you have a backside ribs gently expanding on the inhale and contracting on your exhale. If you're getting this good neck stretch on your next inhale lift your head up and on your exhale place the opposite ear temple to the floor so that's not on our bellies is a great opportunity to just allow those shoulder blades to separate and relax in a different way than you can experience when you're laying on your back You're welcome to stay here in this final savasana for as long as honors you today. However, if you'd like to close out practice together, take your time, make your way to a seated position of your choice. So when you get there, let's use one more big breath. Inhale those arms all the way up overhead. Hands, palms come together. Exhale, hands come down to heart center, thumbs touching on your chest sternum. Tuck your chin to your chest and take a moment to bow to and honor yourself for making this amazing time today. You are so worth it. If you have any questions or concerns about anything I said or we did, I hope that you will reach out till we are together again in person or virtually. Remember to think good thoughts, speak good words, eat good foods, do good deeds, and take the time to nourish yourself from the inside out. If it feels right for you, you can bring your thumb up to your third eye, your drishti, lift your face up towards the sky and know that the light within me honors, sees, and is so thankful for the light within you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste.